welcome to day number nine of how to get your first wholesale deal. Now at this point, I'm sure you've Googled, asked everyone, how do you get your first wholesale deal? What are the best methods to actually utilize? And I'm sure you've heard several different methods from cold calling and you know door knocking. So what's the best method? Today, I'll go over nine different methods that you can use to get your first wholesale deal on day number nine, and I'll let you know my personal favorite method, and I'll also let you know, you know what's the best platforms to use these methods on. So let's get right into it. Now, if you look behind me, you can go ahead and take a screenshot and just turn this video off if you like, but you will be missing out on some great, great content. So stay with me, all right? Now, first thing we have is direct mail. So the direct mail, you know, that's when you mail out to the owner directly. And the great part about this is that, you know, you can scale it, right? So it's less, um, just less hands on. So it can be more passive. So if you just send out the mail and then, you know, you just wait for callbacks. So, you know, that can be a good thing or that can be a bad thing. It depends on the kind of person you are, right? So, you know, it's also a good thing because it's easily scalable. So you can just, you know, send out X amount of, of mailers to get, you know, X amount of deals. Once you figure out that ratio, then you'll be in a great, you know, a great situation, a great, um, you'll be, be, you'll be in the beginnings of creating a great business because you're able to scale it, right? All right, so bandit signs. Now bandit signs, guys, Tell you a quick story. I used to ride around Cincinnati putting up bandit signs all around Cincinnati, Ohio. And the bandit signs, you know, I ended up getting about five different callbacks. I ordered about 500 bandit signs or 200 bandit signs, put them up all around the city. I was not about to go take them back down. That was not happening. So long story short, after five different callbacks, the main thing I got from bandit signs was a person, you know, um, another wholesaler trying to sell me a deal was what I got from Bandit Signs. So at this point, you know, I think Bandit Signs maybe worked and I'm not going to say because I, be I do believe everything, you know, on this list, all nine of them, you will find somebody that swears by it. You will find somebody that's probably teaching on YouTube that's saying it's the best technique, right? So it's really about what works for you and your, you know, target market, right? But for me, in my market of Cincinnati and you know I don't see too many bandit signs out here and um, in Arizona area so that being said you know maybe in a different market bandit signs work but bandit signs I don't really recommend it right so direct mail I recommend it this depends on how much money you looking to spend if you got the money to put into it and you got the patience for it then I do believe that you can definitely I know you can get great results but I'm gonna say I believe it I know you can get great results my personal you know play with um, direct mail came about in the beginning of when I was first trying to get my first wholesale deal so within those nine months I was in a situation where I sent out about 300 mailers and you know about uh, half of them came back with the wrong address or something like that so I just really cut my ties with it decided not to do it right but another thing you guys can do Facebook ads and Facebook Messenger that's something that I actually tried doing myself so I tried doing the Facebook ads and the Facebook Messenger thing and um, for you know real estate wholesaling and the way you do that is basically targeting the interests of the client right so the interests of somebody who may be a real estate wholesale you know um, clients potential client right so that could be somebody who's looking to relocate and Facebook has all these different kind of interests so relocation is one of them you know buying a new house selling the house um, uh, you know need money or like uh, interested in like kind of um, quick cash loans and things like that so there's a whole bunch of different interests you they got age like 68 and I know that some of the laws have changed with that stuff but um you know they got age like over 60 years old or like the, a certain income level a projected income level um, buying habits buying interests just interests of a regular person regular day hobbies all of those things are within Facebook ad manager so I'm not gonna say it's impossible I'm not gonna say like it's um, let me see I'm not gonna say that it's like the best thing though because I've had several people reach out to me that said you know let me run ads <coughs> excuse me. let me run ads for you let me um, you know do all these things for you and I declined it just because with my personal experience and also I've heard 
that it's really not that big of a, you know, I've heard different, I can't say though, because again, everything works for different, everybody, right? What I've heard and what I've personally experienced is that it doesn't work for me, but it's not to say that I'll never re go back and do it, but it can say that it's not my focus right now when it comes to a real estate point of view. But Facebook ads in general are great when it comes to other different avenues, right? So uh, Facebook Messenger though, Facebook Messenger was interesting, right? So I tried it for a little bit, but I recommend you guys definitely trying this one out. It's kind of like the, the another one that you want to see on the list, but it's great because the um, conversion rate was amazing because you are, you know, you're hitting people on their Facebook and these are people that are on Facebook. You get what I'm saying? It's, if that's your audience. So that's something to check out. I think both of those could be good depending on, again, how much money you're looking to use. The pro of it is obviously the scalability and, you know, you can be hands off, passive. But when it comes to these passive ones, right, I'm cut from the cloth of, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather be active versus reactive you get what i'm saying so i'd rather be working towards something versus waiting for something to come towards me because when i'm working towards something i know for a fact i'm going to meet something something gonna be in my path you get what i'm saying you can't keep not working out when you're working towards something but if you're just sitting there being stagnant then you're not only sitting there being stagnant but you're actually moving backwards just because you're waiting and you're not getting better every day. So that's my thought process on it. So I would say use kind of these, a uh, direct mail or like uh, Facebook ads, use those as a, you know, something extra to a different kind of technique that I'm gonna show you. All right, so another one we got is text blasting. So with text blasting, that is, you just blasting a text. And with text blasting, I'm going to recommend Launch Control to you guys. Launch Control was a great service. It cost about, 400 500 bucks um to set up into like for the first month and then i think after that it was like 150 a month or something like that so check it out though it's a great service um that's for the text blasting i can tell you the text blasting wasn't for me again it's one of those things where you sitting there and i don't know maybe i'm just a people person from the standpoint i like to connect with the person when i feel like I feel like that's so important with this wholesale business. And it's not to say that it won't come to you, but I feel like I feel better when I know I'm moving towards something. I don't know. That's just me personally, but you know, it works for several people. Text blasting, look it up, check the laws on it though. Cause the laws are, have changed on it since I used it. And when I was using it, the laws were like the way that launch control set their system up. They didn't set it like an automatic text. You kind of have to press a button for each text. But at this point, they keep changing the laws. I'm not sure what it is, so check it for yourself before you don't get into the service. And for text blasting, uh, I'm not sure about direct mail banner signs. You can look, Google that, where you can get it from. For the text blasting, for the Facebook ads, there was, uh, uh, I, believe, I forgot the name of it, but I believe MailChimp is one of them that you can use, but there's also another kind of flow thing that you can use uh, to set up the Facebook Messenger um, bot and I, I forgot the name of it, but it's a monkey, but look it up. It's called messenger bot So messenger bot look that up and it's something that you'll be able to use to you know use Facebook me uh, messenger if you like to All right now we got cold calling now. That's my personal favorite and I'll tell you guys real quick Pro cold calling if you're looking at you know to get entry level where the barrier of entry from the standpoint of price and the data you know, like you have to set certain limits because you can look up and you spend more on cold calling than any of this other stuff just because of the data that you have to buy. However, I love the fact that the time, so you're putting time in is more active and you got things working, you know, coming towards you as you're putting time in. But I believe cold calling is great for somebody that's new starting off and somebody that's experienced. And if you are going to scale that, you have to use, you know, a, a triple line dollar and not only a triple line dollar, but, you know, hire a caller. I would say hire a caller, train them, hire a VA, or maybe if you just want to hire a VA from an agency, a reputable agency, then do that. I've had my experience of trying to train people and work with people from an incentive point of view, being commission based. However, for me personally, it hasn't worked out successfully yet. But I do think that, you know, it depends on who you're coming in with and who you're starting with and who you're doing it with and who you're having so many variables of the person. Only you can make that judgment call and figure out if the time that you have to invest into somebody to teach them the cold calling process is actually worth the return. And are they the type of person that's going to stick through? Because 
it's a bumpy road. It took me nine months to get my first deal, all right? So that being said, cold calling is great for somebody looking to get in. Get in. Uh, uh, I guess a downside of cold calling could be, you know, you have to actually call on the phone. You have to use that time to put in on the phone. And if you're somebody who's nervous talking to people on the phone, then that'll be a con for you as well. But other than that, guys, you know, cold calling is something great just to get in. You can do that. I mean, if you really think about it, the deal doesn't get done if you don't get on the phone with somebody. Cold calling is just calling somebody that, you know, doesn't know that you're calling, basically. Um, <laughs> not completely that. <laughs> don't take that. Not completely that, but you get what I mean. All right, Google Ads. So, Google Ads, that's when you, you know, SEO, Google Ads, all that type of stuff. You know, when you type something in on Google and they have the first three that pop up, it says ad, ad, ad. That's Google Ads. And what I would say is, you know, at this point in the game, Google Ads is the, the barrier of entry has raised just because they know that it works to the point that it costs more for a Google ad than a Facebook ad. So, you know, at this point, um, if you're somebody that's just starting off and if you're somebody that's also, you know, if you don't want to invest that much money into Google ads, the good part about it would be to you know get people to your website but if you don't have a website if you don't have all these type of things don't worry about google ads it's not a necessary component but if you're somebody who's looking to scale your business again you got a website then it's definitely a good thing for you to check out all right email marketing now email marketing again you can check out mailchimp mailchimp would be a good one for you to show you know the opening percentage and the opening rate of your email marketing campaigns however email marketing you know it depends, guys, because at this point in the game, I can't tell you with my emails, I don't I, I don't really check them that much. I have like a, a ton of unopened me emails, but for the emails that I'm checking for, I'm checking. You get what I'm saying? So if you are checking for the emails and it's, you know, you that's a judgment call. What I can say, the good part about it is it can be free oftentimes. Like literally, you can send those emails out for free. You can collect them for free. All of those things can be free. They're just about setting up a sales funnel. Or also, if you are, you know, um, calling for sell by owner leads, or if you're emailing realtors, all of those kind of things. You know, email. You're ultimately going to use it in some capacity. But just be ready to get on the phone. So don't forget about that. All right, ringless voicemail. So this one is, you know, not entirely new. Um, ringless voicemails. That's when you are. You know, you send out a voicemail, kind of like a, you know, uh, a text blast. So kind of like a text blast except with voicemails. So you send out the voicemail, that voicemail then turns around and, you know, rings the phone. And if somebody answers, it'll just hang up. And if, uh, you know, they don't answer, it'll just like ring the phone like one time and it hangs right up. So if they don't answer, you know, it rings the phone like one time, hangs up. And if they do answer, it hangs up. And if you just leave the voicemail like, Hey, this is D'Angelo from, you know, Jungle Properties. I'm calling about the property on one, two, three, you know, whatever lane, one, two, three Main Street. Wanted to know if you were interested in selling, you know, give me a call back at your least convenience. But it has to be way general because just like text blasting, if you're texting people from an, in a specific area, then it has to be general. So a basic idea is like, hey, my name is D'Angelo. I work with Jungle Properties. We're looking to purchase three bed, two bath homes throughout the 5763 zip code. Your property matches our buying criteria. Give us a call back at your earliest convenience. We look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day. Just something like that, you get what I'm saying? So that way you, you actually making it about three bed, two bath homes versus it just being like, you know, I'm calling for one, everybody is super general or it being super specific. You get what I'm saying? So that's a perfect balance there. All right, door knocking. And Fred Smith, if you don't know who that is, Fred Smith, FedEx, Google them. All right, door knocking. So door knocking is when you pull up and you knock on the door. And when you knock on the door, they answer the door and you say, you want to sell your house? And they say yes and then you pull out the contract they sign it and then you go home that's door knocking it happens like that every time so check out door knocking too if you like to all right guys my personal favorite throughout all of these though door knocking works so perfectly i would say cold calling right is my personal favorite and when i say like my personal favorite it's because you know well, it's because of all the pros that I really told you guys. Guys, you got to excuse me. It's starting to do that little rain stuff out here again. You know how I get. All right. Uh, cold calling. Perfect. I love it. Um, and, you know, I believe the least out of all of these for me personally would be bandit signs. 
I've actually done bandit signs. That's why I say it's my least favorite. If I think, you know, I've tried door knocking, but I did not have a bad experience, but I also did not do it long enough. And I also didn't have many good experiences. And I feel like it's not the best use of your time, to be honest with you guys. All right, so we good. Day number nine of how to get your first wholesale deal. Guys, make sure you tune in tomorrow. We're going to put it all together. And if you got any questions, make sure you DM me. And as long as you have your heart in every step, you know, all of this stuff will come easy to you. It'll be simple. It'll be like, you know, it's supposed to happen. So go with your heart. Whatever one feels right is the right choice for you. I can't do the work for you, but I definitely want to bring the work to you. All right. Now, as always, get to stepping.